Hello, everyone. This is Chao Zhong from Xiaomi Vela team. Very delighted to have the opportunity to represent our connectivity team to introduce you some enhancement we have made to the Natex network subsystem in the past year. Okay, this is the overview picture of the network enhancement. Let's see the uh, features in the blue words in the right side of this picture. Uh, in the driver layer, we have implemented Wi-Fi driver for both QMU and SIM. In the TCP IP layer, uh, we have expanded several IPv6 capabilities such as NAT66, uh, DHCPv6 enhancement, and multiple IP address support. We also implement support for the dynamic lens LB and jumbo frames. To make sure IPv6 works fine, we added PMTUD to detect the shorted MTU size over the path from the source to the destination. For those networks whose IP addresses are assigned manually, we add address conflict detection function to let the network manager know that the normal case happens. We also spend some time to make sure that Natex and Matter works together seamlessly. Thanks to all contributors' work in our team, they are Zhang Hongyu, Wang Zhe, Wang Chen, Li Qinghui, and Mei Jian. Okay, in my later slide, I will introduce you uh, on the following topics one by one. Here comes to the first topic, Wi-Fi SIM driver. Before this feature was available, when we need to debug a Wi-Fi related applications, we have to use a real Wi-Fi board with Wi-Fi functionality built in, which is very inconvenient. With this feature, we can now debug a Wi-Fi application on a PC just like any other uh, regular application debug without a real board. It is very convenient now. This picture in the right shows the uh, SIM Wi-Fi driver's architecture. As we all know that uh, in Natex, WAPI is used for Wi-Fi operations. And the SIM Wi-Fi driver will translate all WAPI commands into WAPI client formats request and issue the request to WAPI supplicant, who is running in the host side. After receiving the request, WAPI supplicant will control the Wi-Fi hardware via uh, config 802w11 or mac 802w11 and the Wi-Fi real driver. And after receive the response from the WP supplicant, uh, SIM Wi-Fi driver will pass the response and format it into the replies to corresponding WAPI request. Please refer to the a uh, readme file under Natex 2.0 SIM Wi-Fi folder uh, on how to use SIM Wi-Fi functionality. Mm, okay, here's a demo on how to use SIM Wi-Fi. Uh, first of all, you need a real wireless card and I already plugged in a USB Wi-Fi dongle into my PC and this uh, interface name is this and we need to rename it into WN0 and then let's run this uh, script tools sim wifi sim wifi rename the old name the WN0 okay we can see WN0 interfaces exist and then we set the SIM Wi-Fi works under the real network card mode in it in O one R and C Okay and then let's start the Natex SIM Okay, it's start up successfully. And we 
enter if config and you can see that wireline zero exists uh, in the same environment and let's set it to station mode pi mode wireline zero two and so focus in station mode and let's trigger a scan operation WAPI scan wireline zero after the scan operation is finished uh, we can see the scan result here and uh, let's try to connect uh, to one of the hotspot around WAPI PSK wireline zero uh, password three and set up the SSID wireline zero uh, this this one one It is trying to connect to the, this hotspot. Now wait for a moment. Okay, and after the connect operation done, let's renew wireline zero. Okay, we can see that IP address already changed. Okay, and let's pin Google. Okay, and the demo is done. After the SIM Wi Fi driver, uh, let's see the QMI Wi Fi driver. Compared with SIM Wi Fi, QMI Wi Fi does not support a real wireless card. It is only supports simulator mode. Every time when an uh, application initiates a scan operation through WAPI, the driver will read, read the config files from the BSS file under ETC Wi Fi folder and return the APC information from the BSS file to the application. When uh, the application initiates a connection, connection request, the driver will compare the security mode and the password. If all configuration match, the driver will return success, making the application believe that it has connected to the target access point. Uh, the section highlighted in uh, blue on the right is the format of the BSS file, which includes basic information about the simulated access point, such as the BSS ID, frequency, SSI, security mode, SSID, and password. Okay, the second part is the address conflict det detection. There are two user scenarios ACD works. The first scenario is when a static IP is assigned instead of DHCP, and the second scenario is that uh, if a device failed to get IP address where DHCP and auto IP function is enabled. Okay, the left picture shows the flowchart of ACD function. Each time when app set up an IP address where IO control and if the address is not a broadcast address, we will send the app announcement packet to the network to claim that we are the owner of the IP address. and. Each time when an app request is received and the IP address uh, conflicts with device's current address, we will send the app announcement frame to claim that the IP address is already in use. After an IP address conflict detected, in addition to print the error logs detect the conflict in the console, you can also see uh, the conflict keyword 
after the init address if you use if config command. Okay, the third one is uh, PMTU, which is Pass MTU Discovery. Let's take a look at the diagram on the right. The data packet needs to be sent from the source to the uh, desk. Uh, potentially, it will pass through multiple routers along the way. Each router may have a different MTU setting. Assume the source want to send a packet with an MTU set to uh, 1500 but R2 has an MTU settings of 1400 R2 will respond an SMP error package notifying the source that the packet is too big please use MTU 1400 and the source then attempts to send the packet uh, with the MTU set to 1400 when the packet reaches R3 R3 realized that uh, it is larger than its own MTU settings of 1200. R3 will also respond with an SMP error message. After set the MTU to 1200, the source is finally be able to deliver the data to the destination successfully. IPv6 networks uh, pass MTU discovery function is a mandatory feature. Some IPv6, uh, sorry, uh, some IPv4 network may also need this feature because specified IPv4 router might disable IP function, IP fragment function, although this case happens rarely. Okay, here is a flowchart of the PMTUD function. Uh, when an SMP packet received, we will check whether uh, it is SMP destination unreachable with error code SMP fragment needed. If yes, uh, we will check whether the destination address is in the PMTU table or not. If no entry was found, we will add a new entry uh, to log its desk address, uh, PMTU, and the current time step. And if a uh, Valid entry is found, we will update its PMTU and time step. And each time when dev if get MTU function is called, we will check whether the desk address uh, is in the PMTU entry or not. And if a valid entry is found, we will use MTU size from the entry for later operation. If not, regular uh, method was used to calculate the MTU size. To make the uh, policies flexible enough, we set up an aging policy for the PMTU entry. The first policy is to remove the oldest entry when the entry space is full. And the second one is remove the entry if no packet was sent to the target IP in uh, terminates. Okay, the third part is the IPv6 enhancement and the meta. Uh, we spent some time uh, to make several optimizations on the IPv6 features this year. For example, in the past, uh, IPv6 addresses can only be obtained uh, in a static way. After fix some bugs in the DHCPv6 library, uh, we add the renew6 command to support uh, IPv6 address update. Now, IPv6 addresses can be obtained through DHCP. Both state stateless and stateful are supported, but the rapid commit is not supported for the moment. Uh, originally, uh, NATX only supports one IP address per network interface. Now, you can set multiple IP IPv6 addresses. We also expand the NAT function uh, from the IPv4 networks to IPv6 networks. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in earlier, this year we spent some time to make sure that NATX and the uh, Matter works uh, 
together seamlessly. In this architecture diagram, the ticketed modules represent a list of the features that Vela currently supports, and now CI works fine in both Natex and Matter community. And here's the uh, uh, CI job information on both communities. Okay, before end of today's presentation, let me show you what we have planned to do in the uh, near future for your reference. Uh, the GSO, GRO, checksum of load, RSS, and ARFS. Uh, for USB related, we, we will implement the NCM and MBM functions. We will also add the net filter functions. Okay, and thank you for your time today.